ಯಶೋರನಂದಾ ಭ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಥೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನಥೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗೋರ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗೋರ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಪ್ರೇಮನಂದೇ ಅರಿಬೋ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನೀತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯೇಷತಾರಿಣೆ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ 
ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधीर नष्ट प्रयेशु वद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी कृष्ण स्वदापगते धर्म ज्ञान देवी सह खलो निष्ठादृशा पूरनाथ So we're continuing to recount the the adventures of Narada Muni in I think I'm allergic to these flowers so I don't know. Uh Narada Muni is uh in search of the devotee who received the greatest mercy from Lord Krishna. So we heard how he began with a brahmana who was doing puja in the month of Magh at Prayag and who gave a lot of charity to everybody there. And so Narada Muni declared to him that you are the greatest devotee. You've got the greatest mercy from the Lord. And the brahmana said, who, me? I said, oh, come on. You got to be joking. Yeah. So the Brahmana told me, said, no, 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 no. Narada Muni said, no, look, come on. All, you have all these disciples. You have so many. And you're doing so much nice service for the Lord. And you're giving charity and performing puja and everything. And you're so humble. And the Brahmana said, no, 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 no. You've got it all wrong. He said, you should go to the southern kingdom. In the southern kingdom, you will see there how the king is really a great devotee. He has, he has got the real mercy of Krishna. My opulence is very small. I'm just a poor brahmana. But you go to the south, you'll see the king. You'll see how much opulence he has and how he's so charitable. And how at the same time he's so devotional. So Narada Muni heard about the king and he went to the southern region. And he was surprised to see in the kingdom. It was like a festival every day. All the people were joyous. And there were many pilgrims coming. And all the pilgrims were well taken care of and fed nicely. And the temples were all beautiful all the temples were decorated with many many beautiful flowers and the deities were really nice well taken care of so that narada muni found the king and then he approached the king and he told the king that you are the greatest devotee You've got the real mercy of the Lord. You're so fortunate. You're such a great devotee. And the king was shocked. And he thought, what? You must be joking. Me? I'm nobody. He said, no, look, you're doing so much charity. You're giving so much to people. It's so wonderful. You're such a 
great soul. And the king said, no, 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 not at all. He said, you think I'm opulent? He said, my, I just have a small kingdom. There are many people with much bigger kingdoms than my, than my kingdom. And there are many kings who are much more opulent than me also. And they're also devotees. They're also charitable. But he said, if you really want to see opulence, if you really want to see great devotees, go to the heavenly planets. You should go to Swargaloka. And in the heavenly planets, you'll see how they are there, how opulent they are there, and how they're all devotees, how they're all engaged in chanting the glories of the Lord and worshiping him so nicely. So go there and see for yourself. So Narada Muni went to the heavenly planets and he went to meet Indra, the king of heaven. And he, he declared to Indra that you must be the greatest devotee because you're doing so much nice yagyas here. So many sacrifices are being performed and you have so much opulence. And you have also a long life compared to people on the earth planet. And so you're so endowed with good qualities. But Indra said, oh, please don't embarrass me. You're, you're making a fool of me. I have so many bad qualities, so many faults. He said, if I was really getting the mercy of Krishna, do you think he would have stopped it? the Brijbasi people from doing the yagya. The Brijbasi people were preparing to do Indra yagya for me. But Lord Krishna came along and stopped them. And he took all the paraphernalia to go and worship Govardhan Hill and the cows. Just see. It, it, I, I'm, I'm not getting any mercy from Krishna. I'm not getting much any real mercy from Krishna. I may be the king of heaven, I may be opulent here, but actually I'm, I'm not really very important. I'm just given this position. I'm in charge of the rain. And of course I tried to use the rain to, dis to destroy Krishna. I wanted to use my, my power to defeat Krishna. And then one time Krishna came, when he came to heavenly planets, he came with his wife, Satyabhama, and he took the Parijata tree and I fought with him. But he defeated me. But just look at my, audash, how audacious I was. I fought with him. I fought with Krishna. I didn't want him to take the Parijata tree. But he took it and he brought it to Dwarka. And he took the Sudharma assembly house. Now both the Parajata tree and the Sudharma assembly house belonged in heaven. But, I, but he took them away from us and he brought them to earth where people die regularly, where they die quickly. They have short life on earth. So Indra was saying like this to Narada Muni that Krishna, Krishna doesn't have any regard for me. He didn't give me any great mercy. I'm, I'm too impudent. I don't give him proper respect and worship. I only worship him for my own benefit. But he said, you want to see somebody who's really a good devotee? You go and see Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma, he's really, he's really good. He's much better than I am. You can go up to, up to Brahma Loka and see Lord Brahma and see how he worships the Lord. So Narada Muni took the advice of Indra and he went up to Satyaloka. And he saw there in Satyaloka how Lord Brahma is worshiping the Lord. The Lord had come to reside there on his planet. 
he came there in the form of the Mahapurush. Mahapurush is like Mahavishnu. So Mahavishnu is residing there in Satyaloka. And all the offerings are being given to Maha, to the Mahapurush. The Mahapurush has a thousand heads. So he has also thousands of arms and thousands of all his faces. They're all eating the offering, accepting the offerings. And they're accepting many offerings and they're giving many benedictions also. So in Satyaloka, you know, we hear about Satyaloka, but we, bet we don't usually know what goes on there in Satyaloka. We hear from the Bhagavad Gita, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka, from the highest planet, Brahma, down to the lowest. But we didn't know what was going on there. But Sanatana Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, who's, who wrote this Brihad Bhagavatamrita, he is revealing to us what is going on in all of these different places. Sanatana Goswami knows because he's a liberated soul and because in his spiritual body, he's a manjari who is confidential associate of the divine couple, Radha and Krishna. So Sanatana knows everything from all the scriptures. He knows past, he knows present, and he knows the future. So he can reveal everything to us. He tells us about everything, what's going on in Satyaloka, how Mahaparusha is there and how he's accepting all the offerings. So uh, Narada Muni thought this, is, this must be it. I've come to the end of my travel. Brahma, is a, he's got the greatest mercy of the Lord. He must have the greatest mercy of the Lord. And he's, Narada Muni explains why. So first of all, he's got a very long duration of life. Indra's duration of life is only a fraction of the duration of life of Brahma. Because Indra only lives for the duration of Manu. And there are 14 Manus in one day of Brahma. In one day of Brahma, there are 12 hours and 14 Manus. And so Indras, also all the demigods, they all get changed every Manvantara. When there's a new Manvantara, then they change also the different demigods. So Indra's duration of life is small compared to Brahma. Sure, Brahma has a much longer life. And Brahma also, he is the original person in the universe. He is born from the lotus flower of Lord Vishnu. He is Adikavaye. He is the, the very intelligent person. The most intelligent. He has to be because he has to do the work of creation in the universe. It's not an easy task. Not only is he doing creation, he has to help maintain also. And all the personified scriptures, like the Shruti, the personified Vedas, and also the Puranas, and the, uh, the Upanishads, all the personification of these different scriptures, they also reside on Brahma's planet, on Satyaloka. So try to understand the position of Brahma, that he's really a great personality. And, and Narada Muni is glorifying him, and singing his praise. But Brahma, Lord Brahma says, stop embarrassing me. I am not such a great personality. And Lord Brahma went on to explain why. He said, he said, you know, I'm very proud. Sometimes I even think I am the creator. 
sometimes I think I am I'm the one who did the creation, but actually I'm created. I took my birth from the lotus flower. But sometimes other people, even sometimes Narada, my own son, he thinks that I'm I must be the creator because there's no one before me. But he doesn't know that I also had to take my birth. I had to take my birth. I took birth from the lotus flower. And that lotus flower came from the navel of Lord Vishnu, who's residing in the lower half of the universe. And Brahma said, look, he said, I took birth from the lotus flower and I was supposed to do creation, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know what to do. But then I got instruction. I heard these two syllables, ta and pa. So ta, pa, when joined together, it means the wealth of the renounced order of life. It means austerities. And so when I heard that, I took it as being a divine sound and I began to do meditation. I did great tapasya for a thousand years of the demigods. And at the end of my meditation, the Lord was so kind that he appeared to me. The Lord appeared to Brahma and the Lord even shook his hand. But then the Lord disappeared. He didn't remain with Brahma. So Brahma said, look, I had to endeavor so hard just to see the Lord. And when he did come, he only came for a very short time and then he went away again. So he said, how could I be such a great devotee? You're glorifying me that I've got the mercy of the Lord. No, no, no. And then Brahma also says, he says that the personified Vedas, they live with me to guide me, to remind me how to follow the Vedas. It's not that because I'm so great that they're living with me, it's because I'm so fallen, they have to come and live with me and guide me and remind me how to follow the principles of the scriptures. And Brahma goes on and says, actually, all I want is liberation. I'm only doing these yagyas and sacrifices to get liberation because I'm tired of all this maintenance and looking after the universe. It's too much work all the time. I have to all the time take care. Any problems that goes on, I have, they all come to me. And I have to deal with all the issues. Right. When there's a problem, Lord Brahma, he has to get involved. And he has, he has to be the go-between go between the other demigods and the Supreme Lord. So Lord Brahma is explaining like this to Narada that I actually said, no, 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 I'm not. I'm nobody. Look. He said, and, and look, he said, uh, there was that demon, Haranyakashipu. He was worshipping me. And he worshipped me to get blessings from me. He took blessings from me. And then with these blessings, then he gave so much trouble to the universe. He created so much turmoil. And all the demigods were his servants. And finally, the Lord had to come and kill him. Lord Nasringadev had to come himself to kill this Haranyakashipu. And after he killed, after her, Lord Nasringadev killed him, then Lord Nasringadev was very angry and nobody could pacify him. All the demigods were afraid. They were all trying to pacify Lord Nasringadev but nothing could pacify him. Even his own wife, the goddess of fortune came 
and she couldn't do anything to pacify him. He was so angry. He was so angry because he had a fight, a big fight with Aranyakashipu. And then finally Prahlad came. And it was only when that boy Prahlad came before him that he calmed down and he took Prahlad on his lap and spoke with him. Actually, Prahlad spoke to him, offered his prayers. So he said, look, he said, uh, after, after he killed that Hiranyakashipu, then Lord Nasringadev called me and he told me, he said, listen, Brahma, he said, don't you give any of these benedictions again. You give benedictions to demons like this Hiranyakashipu, it's like giving milk to a serpent. You give milk to a serpent, it will be poison, poisonous effect. He said, you give benedictions to these the demons like Haranyakashipu, so much trouble. Don't give any more benedictions. But of course, Lord Brahma didn't listen. He should have. But Ravana came, the next yuga, Ravana comes. And Ravana also wants to get blessings from Lord Brahma. And again, problem. And Ravana became so powerful, no demigods could defeat him. And that's why Ravana was able to steal the consort of Lord Ramachandra. <laughs> so in this way, Lord Brahma is saying to Narada Muni, you think I'm a good devotee? Look at all the things I've done. Look at all the trouble I've given to the Lord. And you think I'm the controller of all the demigods. But look at what the demigods did. So many demigods, they brought trouble in the universe. These demigods are all under my jurisdiction. I put them in power. I put them in position as demigods. And listen to what they did. I will tell you some of the things some of them did. Just like Lord, uh, well, we mentioned about Lord Indra that he wanted, he wanted his Indra Yagya and then he sent, because he didn't get his Indra Yagya, he sent his Swambhantara clouds to pour rain. Now those clouds, they're usually only there at the time of devastation. And they come to the, the time of the end of the universe. And Indra sent them there to a night to destroy Vrindavan to destroy all the Brijbasi people and all the cows as well. Indra did like that. And then, uh, Varuna, the god of the sea, he, he, uh, w w when um, Nanda, Mahar Nanda Maharaj went to take bath on the Dwadasi, and it was very early in the morning. And it was the last couple of minutes of the end of Dwad the, the, the end of the Ekadasi, the beginning of Dwadasi. And Nanda Maharaj was taking bath. And the servants of Varuna, they came and arrested Nanda Maharaj. And they took him down to Varuna's palace, down to the kingdom of Varuna and the bottom of the, the sea. Actually, Nanda Maharaj was taking bath in the Yamuna, but they, they arrested Nanda Maharaj, took him a prisoner. And the Lord Krishna had to go there and get him released from Varuna. So that was the audacity of Varuna, that they arrested Nanda Maharaj, the father of Lord Krishna. And then also there was the the, the guru of Lord Krishna, Sandipani Muni, one time his son went to bathe in the sea. And he went to bathe in the sea and he was killed by a demon, Panchajanya. And then Yamaraj took him to his kingdom. Yamaraj took the son of Krishna's guru away. So after Krishna and Balaram had gone there to Sandipani Muni's ashram. 
that's over in Avantipur, which is today that's called Ujjain. So Sandipani Muni, he asked Guru Dakshin from Krishna and Balaram. And he asked them, bring back my dead son. That's the Guru Dakshin. That my son died, you bring him back to me. So Krishna and Balaram went to look for him. And they couldn't find him in the sea with Panchajanya. But they went to Yamaraj and they found him there. And they told Yamaraj, I have to take back the son of my guru. Yamaraj brought the son of Krishna's guru, gave him to Krishna. Krishna brought him back to give to Sandipani Muni. So that was Sandipani Muni. Oh, they took away the, the, the Yamaraj took away the son of Krishna's guru. So Yamaraj made a fence. Varuna made a fence. Indra made a fence. Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, the two sons of Kuvera, they also did a lot of nonsense. They're big demigods, but they did a lot of nonsense. Narada Muni had to curse them. And so Brahma saying, look, look, these are the people. They're under my jurisdiction. I put them in position as demigods. Look how they've behaved. You cannot think I'm doing any great service for Krishna. I'm giving Krishna so much trouble. You're thinking I'm getting, I've got the greatest mercy from Krishna. No. He said, even look at me. Even I myself, look what I did. That I stole away Krishna. Krishna's, uh, one day Krishna was in the forest of Vrindavan with all the cowherd boys and the cows. And Krishna had to go and look for the calves. Some calves had gone missing. And when Krishna had gone to look for the calves, at that time, Brahma came. And Brahma came and he stole away all the cowherd boys and all the cows who were there with Krishna. I stole them away. And Krishna came back and he saw his cows and all his friends were all missing. And Krishna then expanded himself to take the place of all the cows and cowherd boys. And I came back, Brahma said, I came back a moment later, which was a year on this planet. And then Lord Krishna was there in the form of all of the cows and all of the cowherd boys. And Krishna revealed to me how he was actually there as all of the cowherd boys and all of the cows. I could see everything in all of the different cowherd boys and cows, that they were all Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna was teaching me a, a great lesson that I should never try to estimate his power because his power is unlimited. But it's, that was my audacity that I doubted that this little cowherd boy could be my lord and master. And that was why I stole away the cows and the cowherd boy. It was a great offense. It was a great offense on my part to take away the associates of Lord Krishna. I was even more sinful than Indra. Although Indra sent clouds to inundate Vrindavan, he didn't separate Krishna from his devotees. But I was, so, I was so proud and so foolish, I separated Krishna from his devotees and from the cows. So Krishna was really not pleased with me at all for doing these kind of things. So just understand, you think I'm a good devotee? I've done all of this thing? No, not at all. You want to see a good devotee? You have to see Lord Shiva. He's really a good devotee. Lord Shiva is really a good devotee. You go and see him. Lord Shiva is Nitya Siddha. 
is in an eternally liberated soul. And all of his associates are also eternally liberated souls. And Lord Shiva, he has no material desires. He does, he's not attached to any kind of opulence. Brahma said, we demigods, he said, we're all, we're, we like nice flower garlands and we have, so, we like ornaments of gold and jewels. We decorate ourselves with all of these things. But Lord Shiva, he has a garland. He just uses uh, poison herbs and skulls, bones. He makes his garland out of these things because he's not attached. He's not of this world. He's not materialistic in any way. Lord Shiva is non different from the Supreme Lord. If we make a distinction between Lord Shiva and the Supreme Lord Vishnu, then this is an offense. That they're equal, they're both the Supreme Lord. Lord Shiva is not a jiva. He's not an ordinary soul. You can't, just as you, you, you cannot compare uh, Brahma, who is a jiva, and all the other jivas to the Supreme Lord Vishnu. But Lord Shiva, he is a special, he's not a jiva soul like, uh, like all the people in this material world. Lord Shiva, he's the liberated soul. And he has no identification with the material world. That is why he can go around naked, because he's completely detached. He's completely detached. At the same time, he has also his consort with him. His mother Parvati is always there with him. So Lord Shiva, he is really a great devotee of the Lord. And he's so wonderful. He's done so many nice things. We know when the demigods and the demons churned the milk ocean, at that time he drank the poison. He drank the halahara poison, which was produced when they churned the ocean of milk. Initially, poison came off. Lord Shiva came. He drank that poison. And because he drank the poison, his throat became blue. So Lord Shiva is called Nilakant, the blue throat. Lord Shiva is so compassionate that Mother Ganga, Maharaj Bhagirat, wanted to bring Mother Ganga down to earth. Maharaj Bhagirat's forefathers had all been trying to bring the Ganga down to earth. Maharaj Sagar's sons had all been burned to ashes and they wanted to deliver them from their hellish condition. Because they had approached Lord Kapila in an angry mood, they were thinking Lord Kapila had stolen the sacrificial horse. And because of their offense, fire in their body, burn their bodies to ashes. Sometimes people misunderstand this pastime and they think Lord Kapila burned them to ashes. But Lord Kapila wouldn't do that. Lord Kapila is fixed. He's not in, he's, he doesn't get angry, he doesn't get disturbed. People don't respect him or they do wrong to him. He doesn't mind. He's indifferent. But the fire of offense burned their bodies to ashes. So the sons of Maharaj Sagar were all burned to ashes. How to deliver them? And so the different descendants of Maharaj Sagar, they tried. But it was Maharaj Bhagirat who was successful. And Maharaj Bhagirat, in order to bring Ganga to earth, he had to get Lord Shiva to agree to take Mother Ganga on his care. Because Mother Ganga warned that if I come to earth, the force of my water on the earth planet will be too great. 
and it will knock the Earth planet out of its orbit. So how to come to Earth and at the same time not disturb the orbit of the Earth planet? So it was arranged that Lord Shiva, he would take the water on his hair. And that way the, the water could come down to earth. So Mother Ganga, Mother Ganga is actually the water which comes from the Kajyo Ocean, the Karuna Ocean, the Kajyo Ocean. Lord Vamanadeva had made a hole in the covering of the universe. And the water from the Kajyo Ocean would come in. And that water comes in and it flows down from Mount Meru, from the top of Mount Meru. Now, Mount, Mount Meru is situated in the universe very, very high. So Mount, Mother Ganga comes down Mount Meru and it flows in different directions. And one of the passes, she comes over here to this, this region, to the earthly planets. But it's Lord Shiva who has to take the water on his head in order to control the force, the tremendous momentum of that water falling onto the earth planet could knock the earth planet out of its orbit and knock it into the bottom of the universe. So Lord Shiva, out of his kindness, he took that earth planet, he took that water of Mother Ganga on his hair bound it in his hair and then released it so that she could flow down in a more peaceful way without disturbing the orbit of the earth planet. This is the kindness of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is such a magnanimous soul. And he never thinks about himself. He has no material desire. He is easily pleased. People can worship him and easily they can please him. So like this, Lord Brahma is speaking the glories of Lord Shiva to Narada Muni. He's saying, you need to go to see Lord Shiva. He's a real devotee. We say, Vaishnavam Yatashambhu. Of all the Vaishnavas, Lord Shiva is the greatest. Now, we should understand, certainly, Lord Shiva is a great devotee. But is he greater than Prahlad Maharaj? Or is Lord Shiva greater than the cowherd boys? Lord Shiva is a great soul, yes. He's a great Vaishnava. But... He's not equal to these kind of souls. Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj is very, very great devotee. He, uh, Prahlad Maharaj, everything is spiritual for Prahlad. Wherever he goes, wherever he's, he sees everything in Krishna consciousness. So even Lord Shiva isn't equal to Prahlad Maharaj. And the cowherd boys, they're, they have all done pious activities over many, many lifetimes. And that's why they're cowherd boys. They're not ordinary souls. So to get that kind of position, very special. Lord Shiva is great compared to Lord Brahma. But you cannot compare him to Prahlad Maharaj and to the cowherd boys. He's great in relation to Brahma. <laughs> so when we speak about uh, Lord Shiva as being the greatest Vaishnava, means he's the greatest Vaishnava in this world. Prahlad Maharaj, actually, Prahlad Maharaj, he's not of this world. He's completely liberated from this material existence. He has, does not identify with this world at all. He's always in spiritual bliss, Prahlad. But Lord Shiva, he's a different personality. He's a, he's a great personality. But 
we have to understand everything in their relative merits. So Lord Brahma is recommending to Narada Muni that, you know, you should really go and try to see Lord Shiva. And he resides there in Kailash. So Narada Muni will have to go to Kailash to see Lord Shiva. To see, is he really the great devotee? Is he the greatest? Has he got the greatest mercy from Krishna? Of course, we will hear. He said, Lord Shiva, will, will not, he will not accept. Narada Muni will say, you're such a great devotee. You could fight with Krishna. You could even fight with Lord Krishna. And Lord Shiva will say, yes, that's my ignorance. I'm so stupid that I dare to fight with Lord, Lord Krishna. Just like when Lord Krishna came to rescue Aniruddha. Aniruddha had got involved with the daughter of Banasura. One daughter of Banasura, Usha. So Aniruddha, by no fault of his own, somehow another lady, a friend of Usha, named Chitraleka had yoga powers and she flew to Dwarka and she brought Aniruddha while he was sleeping. She brought Aniruddha in his sleep and she brought him to this palace where this girl Usha was because somehow Usha had had a dream and in her dream she saw this form of a young man and she was very attracted to this one young man. So Chitraleka, who had been staying with Usha, Usha was the daughter of Banasura, who was a king, and Chitraleka was the daughter of the, the chief minister of Banasura. And Chitraleka, she had, she not only did she have mystic powers, but she could draw beautiful pictures. And so she was sleeping with Usha one night and she heard Usha talk like she's talking to a man. And she could understand that Usha was dreaming about a young man. And so Chitraleka asked her, who was this man? And Usha said, I don't know. I never saw him before. So Usha began, uh, Chitraleka began to draw pictures of different men. She drew pictures of different princes, princes from different dynasties, different kingdoms. And eventually she came to the Yadu dynasty. And when she came to the Yadu dynasty, then Usha became a little embarrassed. And then she drew the picture, of, not just of Krishna, but she drew the picture of Prajumna, and then Prajumna Aniruddha. And when she saw Aniruddha, then, oh, this was the, this was the man in her dream. And Usha said, yeah, this was a man. Somehow he came in my dream. So Chitraleka said, no problem. I will go, I will go and bring him to you. <laughs> and Chitraleka had her yoga powers and she could fly off and go all the way to Dwarka and enter into Dwarka. Despite all the fortifications, she could enter into Dwarka and in the dead of night, she found Aniruddha and she brought him, laying, still laying on his bed, she brought him all the way back to the palace where Usha was waiting. So Aniruddha wakes up and he finds himself in the company of this beautiful young lady, Usha. Hmm? And so naturally they get intimate with each other and they have, and nobody knows, nobody in the palace even knew about it because it all happened secretly in the dead of night. And so Aniruddha was there for some time. And after some time, Usha, somehow she, she you know, she's show, showing symptoms that she's involved with a man. Uh, you, a, a woman who's chased, a woman who has no affairs with a man is going to behave differently 
from a woman who is involved with a man. So the, the people in the palace, when they saw Usha, they could understand that something's happened to her, that she must be having a deal, an affair with a man. And they told her father, and her father is Banasura. And Banasura, he has a thousand arms, and he's a great devotee of Lord Shiva. Banasura is the son of Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was surrendered to Vishnu, but Bana is a demon. He's become a demon and he worships Lord Shiva and he has 1,000 arms. And when he heard that something's wrong with Usha, that she's having an affair with a man, then he was very angry because he was keeping her very chaste. He was keeping her away from all the men and he wanted to arrange her marriage to a good demon. You know, because he's a demon, so he wanted his daughter should marry a similar demon person. Anyway, he came and he saw this Aniruddha there. And so they came, he came with all these, the, all the soldiers and they tried to attack Aniruddha. But Aniruddha is a Maharati and he fought against them and defeated them. But then Bana, he had a Nagapashu and he released the Nagapashu. And they bound Aniruddha and took him a prisoner. So Aniruddha was taken a prisoner and kept in Banasura's uh, prison. So then Narada Muni, he went to Dwarka and told Lord Krishna what had happened. Because they were all wondering, where did Aniruddha go? We didn't see him for a long time. He's just disappeared. What happened to him? Then Narada Muni comes and he tells what happened. So then Lord Krishna comes with all of his army and they come and they attack Banasura's kingdom. And Banasura, he's got Lord Shiva living there with him because Lord Shiva made a vow that he would stay there and be the guard. Banasura had been playing Madanga or beating the drum, the, the tamaru, tamaru, what's that drum? The tamaru, yeah, right? Beating the drum for Lord Shiva to dance. Lord Shiva likes to dance in the kirtan. We want a good madanga play, a good beating. So Banasura has got all these hands. He's beating the drum nicely. So Lord Shiva is very grateful to him. He said, what benediction do you want? And so Banasura said, I want you to stay here and guard my kingdom, protect my kingdom. So when Lord Krishna came with his army, Lord Shiva is there. And Lord Shiva is fighting for Banasura. So Lord Shiva has to fight against Lord Krishna. Big fight. And Ganesha is also there. Kartike is also there. All the, 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 the whole family, they're all involved. They're all fighting against Krishna and his family. Big battle, great battle. Of course, Krishna's army is victorious. They defeat everyone. And it's very nice battle, big description, different weapons they use. But Lord Krishna comes out victorious, but this Banasura is furious and he's got all these arms and he comes with all this. So Lord Krishna begins to cut off his arms. He's cutting off the arms. And the Lord Shiva comes and he prays to Krishna that he's my devotee. And Lord Krishna said, I know, I know he's your devotee. That's why I'm not killing him. But He's so proud, he's got so many arms, so I'm cutting off his arms. I'll leave him with four arms. And Bana is still there. He's a, an eternal associate of Lord Shiva. He stays there with Lord Shiva. But Lord Krishna cut off his arms, just gave him, left him with four arms, and told him, you stay with Lord Shiva, and you serve Lord Shiva. Because he's a devotee of Lord Shiva. And because Lord Krishna didn't kill him, one reason why he didn't kill him was he's born in the family of Prahlad Maharaj. And so Lord Krishna had given, or Lord Nishringadeva had given benediction to Prahlad Maharaj that your father won't go to hell. Not only your father, your forefathers, your descendants in the future. 
for 14 generations, none of them will see hell. None of them will have to worry about it. They'll all be delivered. So because Bana was in the family of Prahlad Maharaj, Lord Krishna didn't kill him. Because he's in the family, coming from a family of devotees. Just imagine, one devotee in the family can save all the forefathers and descendants and so on from going to hell. So this was the blessing which uh, was earned by Prahlad Maharaj, by his devotion. But anyway, the point was that Lord Shiva said, look, I fought with Lord Krishna. I'm so foolish. I was fighting with him. My ignorance. You're thinking I'm a great devotee? I fought with Krishna. All right, so uh, maybe we'll stop here today. Are there any questions, comments? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, you mentioned that uh, if it uh, think uh, Lord Shiva to be different from um, Krishna, then it is an offense. Uh, but in uh, second offense to the holy name, we are differentiating. So how to understand? This? Yes, right. <laughs> well, we have to understand that Lord Shiva is the the expansion of coming from Lord. Right, he's an expansion, or from Vishnu, Lord Shiva comes. Milk transformed into yogurt. The same way Vishnu transforms into Shiva. So Lord Shiva is not ordinary Jiva. Prabhupada explained to us, he said, Lord Shiva is God in the material world. In the spiritual world, Krishna is God. But in the material world, Shiva is God. And that's why even sometimes the Lord himself will worship Lord Shiva. Just like Lord Rama. Before he went to Lanka, he also worshipped Lord Shiva. And sometimes people ask like that. They say, why is it Lord Rama? He's the Supreme Lord. Why he worships Lord Shiva? Mr. Srila Prabhupada said, now he's telling Lord Shiva, I'm going to kill your devotee. So that was one reason <laughs> Prabhupada said like that. He said, Lord Lord Rama is just telling Shiva that I'm going to go to Lanka to kill your devotee. Because Ravan was a devotee of Shiva as well as Brahma. Right. So yes, well, we don't want to make distinction between Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna. In some way, some, you know, one, but at the same time different. Sanatana Goswami who wrote this book, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, he was a very great devotee also of Lord Shiva. And he also worshipped Lord Shiva and he used to keep uh, Shiva Linga and he worshipped also Lord Shiva. So we have to offer, we say, Aradhanam Sarvisham, Vishnur Aradhanam Param, Tasmat, ta, eh? Tasmat Parakyam Devi, Tadiyanam Samacharam, right? Of all kinds of worship, the worship of Vishnu is the best. But even greater than the worship of Vishnu is the worship of those things in relation to Vishnu. So Lord Shiva is in relationship to Vishnu. So it's even, you could say, even greater than the worship of Vishnu. But it's written like this in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. It actually says that we shouldn't make distinction. Just like Gora and Nitai in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, they often talk about if you make distinction, you only worship Chaitanya and don't give respect to Nityananda, then it's like worshiping Vishnu and not worshiping Shiva, disrespecting Lord Shiva. And so we have to understand the position of Lord Shiva, that he is very great soul. And he can, Lord Shiva can also give liberation. That, that's one of the qualities of Lord Shiva, that he's able to give liberation. Of course, the liberation which they will get from worshipping Lord Shiva is a yuja mukti. They're not going to get 
the other liberation, but they, they can get Sayyuja Mukti from Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva is uh, practically on the level of Vishnu in that sense, that because he's the very dear devotee, just like in uh, Hari Harshetra, we see the deity, Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu combined. They become one deity. One half is Vishnu, one half is Shiva, Hari and Hara, right? Hari is Vishnu and Hara is Shiva. So they become one. Why is Shiva one with Vishnu? Because he's so dear to Vishnu. He's so dear that they become, that he becomes one, they become one deity. So these are some points for us to consider. That we certainly we should never ever disrespect Lord Shiva. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was traveling in South India, he would go and visit all the temples, different devas and different he would go and worship, see them all, offer obeisances to all the great personalities, the Shiva temples, and, and go to Manakshi and all these different temples, you go and see all the deities, worship. But at the same time, he knows they're different, but at the same time, they're, they're actually one. They're not ordinary, not ordinary jivas. They're great souls, great personalities. They're almost one with the Lord. Lord Shiva is almost one. <laughs> Your son loves you so much. That is nice. Just like we also love Krishna, we should also love Shiva, Lord Shiva. When I first joined the movement, you know, I was like, Shiva, oh, Shiva, no, you know. And Shiva, Rudraksha, oh, Rudraksha, no, <laughs> fire, you know. But Later on, I learned more about Lord Shiva and I understand more that, you know, he's really a great personality and he's, as we say, Vaishnavam Yuta Shambhu. So learn to have proper respect for Lord Shiva. But at the same time, he's different. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada. Yeah? Oh, yeah. The associate of Lord Shiva are Bhuta and Paridas also. Demons. Also demons. The associate of Lord Shiva are Bhuta and Paridas, also demons. They will also get liberation because of Lord Shiva's association. What's this? Uh, the associates of Lord Shiva. Yes, if they're associates of Lord Shiva, they're also liberated because they can live in Lord Shiva's abode. In the Kailash, which the Kailash, it's a liberated, it's in the liberated region. It's not in this material world, you know, it's above the material world. It's between the material world and the spiritual world. So the associates, although they have bodies of the ghosts and so on like that, they're also liberated souls if they stay in the association of Lord Shiva. And the question is, they are demonic, uh, demonic Maharaj. They are demonic, so will they get liberation? demonic Did it, well is Lord Shiva a demon Lord Shiva is not a demon as Bhutas and Pretas huh? Bhutas and Pretas Lord Shiva is what Associate. associates by association if they associate with the liberated soul, then they can also be liberated by association. Association. You know, but you, without the association, how you can get any 
So if they associate with Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva is a liberated soul, they associate with him, they'll also be liberated. What is Lord Shiva doing? Lord Shiva is just worshipping the Lord and delivering the conditioned souls so that they associate with Lord Shiva. They serve Lord Shiva. We say, Mahat Sevam Dwara Mahur Vimukti. Right? You associate by serving the Mahatmas, it opens the doors to liberation. So you associate what you serve Lord Shiva, and certainly will open the doors to liberation. They can also be liberated souls. Uh, one more question, Mara. Having drunk the Amrut, what will happen to Devas after their time is done? Having drunk Amrut, uh, what, drunk Amrit, the nectar. nectar. What will happen to devas after their time is done? What will happen to? Well, just it may be. See, it may be that they enter into the body of Mahavishnu and then they come back again, take birth again, come back in the same form. Sometimes, just like in the universe, there's spiritual planets like Dhruva Loka and Sweta Dweep. So what happens to these planets at the time of annihilation? They become apricot. They become unmanifest. And then when the creation takes place again, then they become manifest. So what happens to these demigods? And so they drink the nectar of immortality. How long, the, we don't know how long the effect of the nectar will last. We don't know. But could be that at the end of Brahma's life, they may go back to Godhead. They may be liberated. Or maybe they take birth again. They come back again. They, at, the, at the time of the dev devastation or annihilation of the universe, they just become aprakat and they wait again for the creation to take place. Or maybe they enter into Mahavishnu and then when Mahavishnu creates, they come out from Mahavishnu again, come out in the same form. Yeah. We don't know. We have to wait and see, right? Wait for the end of Lord Brahma's life or when. <laughs> Drinking nectar. <laughs> What's the effect of drinking nectar? We have the nectar of the holy name. Right? If they drink the nectar of the holy name, then they'll get the greatest benefit. And so we want to give them the nectar of the holy name. They drink the nectar from the ocean of milk, but they should drink the nectar of the holy name to get the ultimate benefit. To get freed from birth and death. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Rational can we get a dash of their lordships?